Happy New Year! Welcome to 2024 and the Crossing King Garage. I'm Randy. And I'm Kristen. And we want to thank you so much for joining us again in 2024. We want you to take, make sure that you tell everybody that you know that this is the place to find family entertainment and maybe every once in a while some interesting conversation. We've got some great shows planned for you for the coming months. So click back every other Thursday here at Crossing Ken. Today we're kind of doing something different. Today we are taking a look at all of the movies we saw in theaters during 2023 and telling you guys whether we are glad we went to go and see them in theaters or if we could have waited to stream them. We affectionately call this episode, Should I Stay or Should I Go? <laughs> da, na, 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 na. Yeah, anytime we get tie-in music, baby, anytime. At, at the end, after we get through all the movies we saw during the year, we are going to tell y'all about five of the movies that we are very much looking forward to definitely seeing in theaters. But first, what we already saw. Now, bear in mind, at least two of these movies I didn't go with Dad to see in theaters, but I am going to offer a bit of an opinion on. The first movie is Jesus Revolution. Three, two, one. Yeah, I'm really glad. I actually saw this twice in theaters. Um, this is a fantastic movie based on the hippie Jesus movement, yes? Right, the Jesus Revolution of the late 70s, early 80s. Um, that started out in Calvary, uh, Calvary Chapel out in California. It was a movement that swept across the nation. Uh, in fact, uh, Woodlawn, the movie, with Sean Astin caught bits and pieces of some of that movement at the same time. Uh, this goes into detail about the pastor who would eventually um, become the pastor of a, a, a huge mega church, church, mega church out in California. Um, and the um, charismatic uh, character who came alongside of him to partner in bringing, um, bringing a movement to the youth culture of the time that did not involve uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. This movie stars Kelsey Grammer, that's right, Frazier himself, also Beast from X-Men, um, as well as the gentleman who plays Jesus in The Chosen. He plays Lonnie. Yes. Lonnie Frisbee, yes. Um, there are many other actors whose names are currently escaping me, I'm sorry, um, but this is a fantastic movie. Uh, the Jesus Revolution is a kind of semi-biographical uh, tale of Greg Laurie, who is now the pastor of the mega church out in California, Harvest Church out in California, and his uh, road to redemption, so to speak, and a certain road to salvation. Um, you can, the soundtrack is fantastic, the storyline, especially for folks my age who were really kind of living some of the whole Jesus movement thing uh, at the time. It's very, very reminiscent, and it's a great story great movie. Jesus Revolution is currently available to stream on Netflix. Perfect. All right, up next, <laughs> we go from Jesus to dragons. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Friends, you will only feet. see this here <laughs> at the Crossing King Garage. <laughs> Nowhere else do you get this kind of variety. <laughs> this kind of a transition. All right, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. Chris Pine, Captain Kirk, um, trying to, I guess, get into another franchise. Um, Which I could, hope it does become I do, a franchise. I do, too. I, I, I hope they continue telling the story, because this was a very entertaining film uh, based off of the Dungeons and Dragons board game. The cast is incredible. Not only do we have Chris Pine, we also have Michelle Rodriguez, um, Justice Smith, Hugh Grant, <sighs> I cannot ever remember his name. The guy from Bridgerton. Um, I think his first name is Renee. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I can't remember his name right now. It's um, popped up over her head right now. I'm sure she's edited it in. <laughs> yes, I have. It so. should be floating above my head right at this moment. Um, the ensemble works great off of each other. Sure. Just absolutely fantastic. Um, the story is pretty basic. A thief just wants his kid back. Right. Um... And so that's pretty sweet. And I love the fact that they're all like, oh, yeah, we want treasures, but we're going to help you get your kid back first. Yeah. That is our priority. Yeah, the, the um, chemistry is so good, you almost kind of 
hope to see Chris Pine in a Fast and Furious movie. I mean, let's do it. Directed by John Francis Daly mm. um, of the of Bones fame. He played Dr. Sweets in Bones. He is an actor, a writer, and this is one of his directors. Directing credits. He didn't do this alone, but I cannot remember who his uh, directing and writing partner is. I'm very sorry. We like John um, Francis Daly. So. We do. Um, and I'm thrilled that we saw this in theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw this with some friends of ours, uh, which made it even better. Um, it is currently available to stream on Paramount+. Plus. Moving right along. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. 3, 2, 1. Yay! <laughs> it is poignant. It is a great conclusion to the trilogy, and it does a good, good job of setting up what could possibly be other films in this particular portion of the Marvel Universe. The villain is very, very good. Very good. Um, this is a much darker take on Guardians. This is not the bright rainbow colors of Volume 2. This is fairly dark and a little bit traumatizing. If you are an animal lover... Don't watch this by yourself. Have somebody there to comfort you. We would highly recommend, however, that you do go and see the Christmas special yes. before oh. <laughs> watching this film. Yes, because there are a few little gapish things that the special does fill in. And also the special is just a great deal of fun. What more do you want? Christmas, Guardians of the Galaxy, Kevin Bacon. Yep. That's the Christmas special. Volume 3, its soundtrack is a little bit more 90s. Yeah. So if you came to Guardians of the Galaxy for the 70s and 80s soundtrack... This soundtrack is a little bit more 90s, so that might be a little bit of a mood for some of y'all. I personally liked the soundtrack, um, but I didn't know a lot of the music because it was like alternate rock and mm -hmm. pop. A lot of it's alternative, a little bit of grunge going on. Uh, it was songs that were popular in the 90s. It, it was a good mix. It transitioned very well, the soundtrack did. So, so yeah. that That is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm thrilled we went and saw it in theaters. Alright, up next. Fast X. Three, two, one. <laughs> we love this franchise. In fact, it is on our list of films to watch for New Year's Eve. Um, we almost are to the point where we're going to have to split this thing into two days. Yeah. Uh, Fast X Part <laughs> 1, right? No, it's Fast X and then no, it's, it's going to be 11. it's Fast X and then it's going to be 11. 11 in so. theory, 11 is going to be the last one, but who the heck knows? They keep on saying that maybe the franchise is going to end with a trilogy. We don't know. We're just happy that it seems like literally everybody. It's is great to back. continue the Toretto family story. Here at family. Crossing Ken, it's all about family. family. So <laughs> we love this film. It was a perfect popcorn movie. Yes. Mixed with enough blend of drama and humor. That is one of the things that is so cool about the Fast and Furious films is they do a very good job, especially after the first couple, which were heavy drama, in infusing a good balance of humor in on the film. Uh, we, we and, t and just the storyline of family, all that just permeates all the way through, including the extended family that goes on into these films. We love them. <laughs> Tyrese Gibson, bless him. He, he and Ludacris have just made a whole career out of taking shots at each other in this franchise. This franchise has people that legit hate it because it's not a car mo franchise anymore. And let's be honest, they kiss physics goodbye after the first five minutes. But who cares? It's a movie. Yeah, you almost are anticipating the drama off screen that comes from yeah. the set. Hey, as much as you do the drama on Everything screen. seems to have been buried. Dwayne Johnson has a cameo in this absolutely, one. So absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're good. The family's back the together. The family's back together. <laughs> and Gal Gadot is back. Spoilers. And Gal Gadot is back. Yep. So, so we're happy. Moving on. We cannot on. wait for 11, which will come out next two years, somewhere in there, hopefully. Probably 2025 with the writer's strike. Yeah. All right. Up next, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Three two, one. Yeah, I did. I wasn't sure if we would agree on that one. For Harrison Ford, the last one might have should have been the last one. Mm -hmm. um, this one, it was good. Please don't get me wrong. Yeah, no. A lot of the formula was back for Indiana Jones. Yes. It was so good to have um, all of these characters come back and John Rhys Davies' yes. character come back. And, and Marion. And Marion be back. And just... But you want there, to see Harrison Ford as a hero, mm -hmm. and for most of the film... He's a sad old man. He's a sad old man. And 
I guess that's more real than what we expect from Indiana Jones. And let's face it, Harrison Ford's a gazillion years old. And so you just, <laughs> you would anticipate. But I don't know that it really, if they were hoping to get a torchbearer to pass to, I'm not sure that they did a very good job of doing that. I will say Phoebe Waller did a great job in the film. She was a very good character. I enjoyed good character. her immensely. Absolutely, yeah. My issue with the film is really in the last like half hour. Like I was I was okay, I was on board, but then we got into time travel. And kind of jumped the shark with that. Again. Thing. Like yeah. nuked the fridge. That's the phrase we nuked use with fridge. Indiana That's Jones. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we nuked the fridge so hard. Like Crystal Skull and Aliens. I was hoping, hoping, hoping we were gonna get back to normal with Indiana Jones. Just go after our treasure, man. Just go well, after our treasure. We don't need sci fi. If you look back at the Indiana Jones filmography. Or Sci alien type sci-fi. We don't need that style of sci-fi. The, the best ones were always when he was after, after something, biblical. something biblical. And we started there. That's and we, what's we, terrible. We headed the down the pathway. Thing. We were thinking that things were going to be. And, and then, then all of a sudden off we into the weeds. nuked the fridge. I will say again this, however. Mads Mikkelsen was a phenomenal villain. Very good bad guy. I have yet to see something with Mads Mikkelsen that I outright don't like. Um, and let me be clear. We did like this, or at least I did. We liked the film. I was about to say, we are, don't get us wrong, we will re-watch the movie oh, and yeah. probably enjoy it more the second time than we did in the theaters. It's just one that we, in retrospect, think perhaps maybe we should have waited on the streaming. Now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Perfect. Next. And I believe Fast X is now streaming on either Prime or Peacock. I forgot to do that. Next, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Three, two, one. Yeah. Okay, this is the 89th Mission Impossible <laughs> film. This is the seventh. <laughs> but the stories could just continue to amp it up and amp it up and amp it up. And <gasps> you hard. added Haley Atwell. Yes. We love awesome. Haley Atwell. Absolutely we love you, Agent awesome. Carter. That, that is one of those... She is one of our favorite actresses since Captain America. And the addition to her in this franchise was brilliant. I will say I'm a little bit sad that we killed off Rebecca. Or uh, Elsa, Elsa. Elsa, that was her name. Um, I'm a little sad we killed her off. Um, and for some weird reason, I don't know why... I kept on being worried about Benji during the last little bit because this whole thing, the, 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 the algorithm or the whatever it is, the freaking computer thing, it's supposed to like control all technology, yeah? Mm -hmm. Benji was in a self-driving car. I was so worried that he, the, the, the algorithm or whatever the crap it was was about to veer him off a cliff. Like, uh, do, you can hurt anybody. You can take out Tom Cruise. You can take out the dude, the... the um, Kittredge, you could take him out. I don't really want you to hurt Ving Rhames. I'm kind of attached to him. And don't touch Simon Pegg. Don't touch Simon Pegg. That's where my rant was going. Do not touch Reaper Cheap. Rant over. Rant over. Next film. This film was great. We Good. Loved we it. loved it. Great popcorn film. All right. Up next, we have Haunted Mansion. We've talked about this a little bit. Three, two, one. Yay! We love this film. We. I, I confess I've not seen the Eddie Murphy version um, he but doesn't want you to. This, 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 this was, it was just Precious. a good, it was back to Disney's magic. It was a family oriented, even though it was extended family in the long run. Owen Wilson was Owen Wilson in this film, and that's really what you want out of anything that Owen Wilson is in. <laughs> this is um, and it just put together, the cast was so good. Rosario Dawson Rosario was amazing. Rosario Dawson was good. Danny DeVito. Um, Lakeith David, I think, is the yes. lead actor's name. Yeah. He did a phenomenal job of bringing in the drama. Jared Leto as the Hatbox Ghost. My sir, I'm scared of you now. Nice job. All the um, way around. Disney, we, Kath, we, we, we cannot say this about a lot of Disney's recent fare, but that was a film that, at least here in the Crossing King Garage, we, we would have gone to see again, I think, in theaters. So. Yes, we, we liked it very, very much. And, Disney, you did the one thing that I needed you to do in this film. 
you had Grim Grin and Ghosts as basically the score. Go check and out our haunted fi- our haunted songs video. Haunted songs and our best Disney villains. I think we shouted out Haunted Mansion all through October. Yeah, all through October. All right. Up next, Oppenheimer. Now, this is one of those that I did not see, but I have an opinion. I am still going to vote. So, three, two, one. Yeah. Didn't live up to the hype. I mean, we had been... Th- this film had gotten built up so much. Now, don't get us wrong. We like Christopher Nolan, okay? Yeah. And I think overall, he made the film he wanted to make. I just don't know that it was a film that needed to be made. Um, the story of Oppenheimer has been told in other varieties of films. Um, and I think this one probably got as close to what reality was. But I just... I just uh, I, I, it's one of those films I wish I hadn't even seen, uh, honestly. Um, I, I just did not like it. The acting was great. The storyline le- left a little to the imagination. The time frame, all of the history. And I think that's where it got a little heavy-handed, is it just got so bogged, so down. bogged down in itself. Um, you know, where... Um, other or other other films of this nature really do a good job of telling the story. I just don't know that this one told the story. It had a lot of historical type facts, had a lot of dramatic scenes, but I just don't know that it told the story very well. Moving right along, Sound of Freedom. This is another one that I didn't see, so I'm actually going to not vote on this one. So uh, three, two, one. And I say that because it's a faith-based film that is neat, you know, and and we love faith-based films here at at Crossing Ken. And this is a story about human trafficking that needs to be told. Um, Starring Jim Caviezel. Starring Jim Caviezel. And um, so it it is just, it is a a true-to-life adaptation, uh, the best way to put it, of uh, of FBI agents' um, uh, efforts to try and um, curtail human trafficking, especially among children. I would highly recommend it. It's heartbreaking, um, but it does have... It's a good story. It tells a good story happy all the ending. way through. Um, happy-ish, happy-ish ending. Ish. Happy-ish ending. Well, um, that kind of subject matter, happy-ish, is kind of all you can really hope for, That's all you can for, really right? hope for. Yep. All good right. movie. Good movie. All right. Uh, uh, is it available for streaming yet? I don't think so. I think so. it's still playing in some theaters. So. Um... By the way, Haunted Mansion, available on Disney+, Plus, and I don't think Oppenheimer's out on streaming yet. Um, as, of actually, this, as of the recording. As of the recording yeah. of this. Up next, we have Gran Turismo. Three, two, one. Oh, we finally disagreed. Well, I, this is a film that I could have, I loved, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. I loved. But as expensive as going to the movies is for the Crossing Kin family, for this family, um, that's one we could have done and probably enjoyed streaming. The film is fantastic, though. The it is. Car, the yeah. car racing action is st- incredible. It we, tells a great story. We are not uh, race people, Mm-mm. car racing people, by any stretch. Nor are we necessarily gamers. But this held our attention from start to finish. Um, fantastic cast. I'm sorry, I don't know the lead actor's name, but the kid that plays the lead, the mm-hmm. driver, yeah. he did phenomenal. Good job. Orlando Bloom needed this movie. Orlando Bloom was very good in this film. Um, and David Harbour, I love you. I love you, David Harbour. You're great in Stranger Things, and I loved you in Black Widow, but I loved you in this Makes so us much. curious, very, very curious, to see what, what Thunderbolts, right, yes. is going to probably be his next big tentpole. Yeah, uh, Thunderbolts in season five of Stranger Things. Right. But this was a great movie. If you're a fan of the Gran Turismo game or if you're a fan of racing, this is definitely a movie you need to try to stream. I don't think it's available on streaming straight up yet. I saw an ad um, that it was coming soon. It's on, like, demand, I think. It's available on demand now. Yep. Um, I'm not sure where it'll go as far as streaming because I think this is a new line movie. Mm-hmm. So probably my, HBO. Uh, maybe HBO, maybe Max, maybe Prime. They sometimes release their yeah. stuff on Prime. Yeah. Um, I think Mission Impossible is also available. Good on film. Prime Good film. Paramount. Uh, just not. I loved it enough to go see it in the theater. Okay. Good. <laughs> We finally disagreed on one. And it may be the only one we disagree. I was about to say, we only have one movie left, so. (laughs) 
And this was the last movie that Cross and Kin saw in theaters in 2023, The Marvels. Three, two, one. Yay! Now, I have to say, there is a lot, a lot of people saying that this... Killed the MCU. I don't think so. I think this film, you you, you have to have watched uh, Ms. Marvel mm -hmm. on streaming, on Disney+. Plus. You really needed to see Captain Marvel. And WandaVision. And WandaVision, for that matter. Yeah. You had to do some background work, but... If you're watching this movie, that means you're in the MCU. Chances you are you no already excuse. had the background work done. You have no excuse. This we th <laughs> I thought this was back to Marvel's, um, I wouldn't say necessarily Iron Man as good, but certainly better than Thor. To me, better than any of the Thor films. I um, and I think it propelled the story, the overall story of where Marvel is going right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, I, Brie Larson was good. Yes. Uh, Tayana Paris. Tayana Paris was phenomenal. And Iman. I cannot, I cannot pronounce her last name and I don't want to try to butcher it. Yeah, so. Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel. Kamala the actress, Khan. Kamala Khan was the Iman. actress. And the supporting cast yes. in this thing. The family con, I love them. Absolutely um, perfect. Samuel L. Jackson seemed back in gear after seeming a little off in Secret Invasion. Right. Um, and again, the family con, I'm obsessed the, with them. Uh, to me, the supporting characters in this film absolutely made the film. Now, the villain is not going to go down as a great Marvel villain. No. She's not. No. She's not. But she's also not going to go down as uh, one of the worst. But which, she's one of those sympathetic villains mm -hmm. that you, 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 you want you want her demise to happen. Mm -hmm. But you're also, you also understand where she's understand coming where from. she's coming from. I mean, she's, you do, and she is actually well played. Again, the villain is not written great, but it, she is very well acted. Um, and the a lady who plays her is actually Tom Hiddleston's wife in real life. There so you go. That, I mean, another keep it in the Marvel connection. family. Keep it in the Marvel family. Um, we liked the Marvels. We, it's a we simple did. story. It's a simple story of basically friendship and family and sisters. And, and the whole body changing thing <laughs> was, wow, that was a great, great element. And, and it, it was played action. for action effect. It was played for comedic effect. It was really, really uh, just, yeah, Marvel, you did a good job with this. The last thing I want to say is... Thank you, Brie Larson, for coming into your character in this film. Yes. You've been... I I love you. Do not get me wrong. I liked you in Captain Marvel, but you were very stiff. You did so much better in this movie. This, this, this was your best it performance. It seemed Brie Larson was Carol. comfortable in her own skin yeah. in this one. She in, seemed in the role. so and much more comfortable. It, 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 with each iteration that Captain Marvel <laughs> has shown up, she seems to have gotten more and more and more comfortable as one of the most powerful beings in the universe. And she's she's finally there now. And I think it probably helped having uh, Tayana and Iman, Iman to uh, play, play off of, of yeah. in this. Especially with Iman just being the absolute happiest of person. It is going to be so much fun, <laughs> spoiler alert, to see how Young Avengers yes. comes. And and how the... the uh, just I'm, I'm already beginning to get... Uh, as excited about Young Avengers as I have for any Marvel property that has uh, been coming along the pike, just because of the smart Alex that you're getting in the <laughs> team. Uh, you know, just between yeah. Kate Bishop and uh, um, Cassie Lang, Cassie Lang, and Ms. Marvel, son. possibly Spider-Man, even possibly if Spider they can figure out the contractual obligations. Stuff with Tom, yeah. So. The la again, spoilers. Kelsey Grammer, baby. Back as Beast! Woo! That was, that was, that was very, we very were nice. in the X Mansion. We saw the freaking Cerebro door. We got a mention of Charles. We're so happy. And we introduced mutants proper. Yes. Yes. Mutants proper. And it was Kelsey Grammer. And it was one of our favorite actors. Yes. So those are those are the films that we saw this year. Those are the ones that we like. We really only had a couple that we really were like, ah, man, I wish we'd saved the money for this one. All right, so but we're gonna go through these as quick as we can. Twenty twenty four is coming, and coming. even with the writer strike, there are some films out there that we really think we are definitely gonna try and go see at the theater. But we think that you'll enjoy as well. First up, we have Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. We loved the first Afterlife. Ghostbusters, the uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, <laughs> and from everything I'm reading, all of the characters are coming back. 
all of the original OG Ghostbusters as well as the new G <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> um, the new phrase there, OG and new G. But anyway, we, we're and since the trailer looks exquisite, Kristen's going to include the trailers yes. for all of these films that we're about to if, talk about. If the if trailers available. are available. Yeah, um, um, and most and of them some, are. Uh, some of them aren't, but I, I will do my absolute best to find trailers to link. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! All right, up next we have Twisters. Oh, I can't wait. This, this is, is a sequel yeah. to the 1980, 90, somewhere in there. It's between the 80s and the 90s film Twister, which starred Bill Paxton and... Helen... Hunt? Hunt, yes. Helen Hunt. And um, a myriad of others. And a myriad of others. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman Philip was Seymour in this Seymour Hoffman was in the original, um, yes. So they're going to have to do some recasting because Philip Seymour Hoffman's past, so has Bill Paxton. Um, they, although I think the basic plot is that Bill's dead and these are his daughters. Yeah, his something like daughters. that. He's got, he, he and um, and Helen Hunt's daughters have taken over the family business and uh, are... Chasing Twisters chasing again. Chasing Twisters. I mean, and having... And the Twisters will start chasing them back. When is uh, when is Twisters and Ghostbusters due out? I think they're both due out in the summer of 2024. Okay. Very good. Um, <clears throat> Up next, Deadpool 3. Oh, my goodness. We will confess to you that this is a film normally Cross and Ken... Would not promote. We would not promote an R-rated film. This is a film that's a part of the MCU. We do not recommend that you take anyone under the age of 18 to go and see it. No. Not by any stretch of the imagination. The humor is adult humor. There is going to be a great deal of blood. And a great deal back. of language. And a great deal of language. But so, with Hugh those qualifiers... Um, Hugh Jackman is back. Hugh Jackman is back as Wolverine, and... With the return of Kelsey Grammer in the Marvels, now everybody's saying Beast will probably be in it. We'll, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see where Ryan Reynolds pokes fun at his first official MCU film. Oh, I guarantee you at one point he's going to break out some Mickey ears. It's going to be hilarious. It is. It is going to be one of the rare R-rated films that we go and see, but it's going to be one that we go, we go and see. I am honestly looking forward to watching Deadpool try to make Wolverine laugh. We will let to... you know yes. if it's not one you need to see. <coughs> we'll do that's little, our commitment to you. We'll do a little short after we see it, like a little brief review. Krista mentioned doing a short. We may try and do a short after all of these films. That's probably a really good idea. Yeah, just to <laughs> let you know. Thumbs up. All right, up next we have Wicked. Dad has not seen the musical. Dad is not a big fan of Wizard of Oz. However, I have listened to the album Ad Nauseum. I have seen a bootleg, don't tell YouTube, of um, the, the musical on YouTube. Guys, it's going to be epic. And it's part one. Okay. Yes. So, uh, the way things are billing it out, it's going to be a two-parter. I would imagine broke wherever the intermission falls. That's, so. that's my imagining. For those of you who know the musical, I pretty much imagine that um, the first film is going to end either right at or very close to Defying Gravity's conclusion. And then part two will pick up with um, Thank Goodness. But... Uh, that is not a guarantee. For all we know, they are going to throw curveballs at us. I am I am equal parts excited and nervous about this movie just because it's a musical. And sometimes Hollywood doesn't handle musicals well. I confess this is probably one Kristen's going to drag me to see because yes, I'm is. just such the Wizard of Oz, the entire storyline, all of it. I've never had a desire to see Wicked, and, and my musical friends tell me it is absolutely so different from The Wizard of Oz. I and keep that telling it, him. It tells a good story. So, we will let you know if I go and how we liked it. Um, I think this one comes out around Christmas time next year, likely, or yeah. this year rather, so uh, we'll see. Um, and last but not least, something Dad literally just found yesterday. As of the recording of this film, or this video rather, The Fall Guy. Okay, this is <clears throat> Emily Blunt, Ryan Gosling. 
you may, those of you who are my age, may recognize, wait, Fall Guy? Wasn't that a TV show? Yes, it was, starring Lee Majors back in the 80s, about the same time as the A-Team. This is a movie <clears throat> that is being made not necessarily as a reboot of the, of the TV show, but as a being inspired by the TV show. Ultimately, it, it winds up being a stunt guy, a Hollywood stunt guy, gets involved in helping to solve a crime. And it stars Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling. And the trailer looks funny. It looks like Fast and Furious, where the cars actually get tore all to pieces. And it's a stunt film. So you can imagine that the stunts are going to be out of this world good. But for right now, those are the films that we're anticipating in 2024. The Fall Guy looks very, very funny. Watch the trailer. I think you'll agree. It looks like it has incredible potential. Um, I want to say the TV show only lasted three or four, maybe five years, if that long. I liked the TV show when I was a kid. Uh, I don't know. I just don't remember much about it. So, All right, you guys. That's it. That is our film review of 2023 and our looking forward to to films of 2024. We hope that you anticipate coming back to Crossing Ken as much as we anticipate going to see some of those films in 2024. And if you don't like our, our critique, so to speak, of those films, hey, let us know. Give us a comment down below. We tailor Crossing Ken to you. And if you want to help us go see those films uh, this year, we will accept the gift cards to Cinemark and Regal. Email address is down in the description. Let's face it, going to the films are, are expensive and we're not too proud to beg. Um, so help Cross and Ken. Help Cross we'll and give Ken you a shout out. And we will make sure that you receive a shout out. Your favorite, you know, we'll take e-gift cards from Regal and Cinemark. We just wanted to let you know and... Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. The solicitation is over. Um, and that's us wrapping it up here at Cross and Kin. I'm Kristen. I'm Randy. And from the Cross and Kin Garage, we look forward to going to see the movies with you. Bye.